Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and this video we're continuing off from where we left off, essentially with the equipping item stuff. As you can see, I've quickly just made another uh, item here to pick up. I just wanted to further test it a little bit to make sure that it worked with the different uh, items, and that seems to work fine. I can equip between them, and you can see it on equips and equips again uh, with the locks that we made last time. So I really just want to continue off from there. So one of the things I also want to do is I want to make like a, an item point on somewhere on the player. Um, which I think should just like float around somewhere in front of them and that should be a synchronized point of some kind. Um, now let's just make an empty object and this will just be called like item point or something like that. And I'll just make this know, an orange circle, whatever. We'll put it out here somewhere in front of the player, something like, I don't know, like here in front of his chest. I don't know, that should be fine. And then on the player inventory, I just want to make a reference to this. So I'll make a serialized field, private transform, and this will be the item point. Uh, and I'll actually also add this to the player movement just because I want to also move this item point like up and down so other people can see where you're holding the item. And one of the ways I want to do this is by just simply adding the transform, the network transform to it. So now this point, whenever that, you know, the local player decides to move it and whatnot, it should also uh, uh, network and everybody should be able to see the point move in, which means if we have an item under the point spawned, well, then it should, you know, work as intended. So now let's start by just having this point uh, actually move. And one of the ways that we can do this and um, would maybe be to just uh, parent it to the camera once the camera's position has been set. So let's try that. Let's try item point that's set parent and let's do it to the player camera transform. This is just going to be my very first attempt. Again, I've not tested this or tried it before. Let's try and feed the item point into here and also into down here like so. I'm not sure what my inspector is angry about here. Well, either way, it shouldn't matter. Let me try and hit play here. Let's try and have a look with the gizmos on. Um, I can't see much. I guess we can try and see the camera. The item point has been parented. And let's have a look at where that is compared to our player. That looks right. So that's somewhat in front of the camera. And if I do like this, you should be able to see it yeah, move up and down as intended. I'll just go and try and have a look on the clone to make sure that things are looking right there. So you can see his item point and you can see it moving up and down as intended as well here. Okay, cool. So we can see that works completely fine. Now let me go back here, disable gizmos, put the scene back, whoops, wrong place, there we go, and stop that. Cool, so now we have a little item point on the player. Uh, I do actually also just want this a little bit further and a little bit more up, but we, again, we can play around with the position of it later. Now that we have this item point, we can essentially use this to spawn and despawn whatever items it is that we want to hold in our hand. In this case, it's just going to fly in front of us. Um, if you are interested in you know inverse kinematics having the arms actually hold things correctly and so on go watch the fps series that i have where i actually do the kinematics the kinematics aren't that relevant for networking so i'm not going to do it in this series but it's really the same idea if you want to hold something you just set up these points that it tries to hold and similar idea to what we did with the weapons over there really okay cool so now in here, when we want to equip an item, I think what we should do is we should try and spawn it in our hand. So let's make a var, new item, and let's do instantiate. And let's spawn this item. Let's spawn it at the uh, position of the item point. And let's also just do uh, quaternion.identity. But now we can figure out what we want to do in terms of rotation and whatnot later. And of course, we also wanted it childed to the item point like so so that that way we should be able to see things move around and then when you unequip we should technically take uh, not the item because this is actually just a, a reference to the prefab we want to take the actual spawn items let's keep track of that item and let's call it item in hand and let's essentially just down here check if whoops if there is no item in hand we return and if there is an item in hand we will uh, destroy it so let's destroy and then item in hand game object and then let's set item in hand back to null. And now we should be able to remove these locks. And of course, we can just set this to be the item in hand instead. All right, let's go and test this and see if this works. Now we should be able to equip the things in our hand. So I'll start up the game. We'll go and pick up this one, for example, drag and drop it down here. And now, we'll go, now it's in front of us. Now, as you can see, the physics enabled. And you can see when I switch away, it despawned again. So despawn. Okay, so that technically works. Now we do want to figure out what we do in terms of the physics with the item. Earlier in one of the previous videos, I was a little bit lazy and I just said it uh, not to be owner auth. But I think at this point, we actually want it owner auth. However, now we want the item to act a little bit different. So here in unspawned, we set it 
to whether the rigid body is kinematic or not. I don't think this is what we want to do anymore. We essentially want to probably do an on owner changed and then modify who actually controls the rigid body upon the ownership changing. So let's try and do it like this. So let's do rigid body dot is kinematic and let's just set that equal to the is owner and equal to the not is owner, I think is the correct way to go about it. So now if we're not the owner, and I guess another thing is we do want it to be kinematic when we hold it. So let's try and figure out how we handle that. Um, I guess the first thing we could just try is just when we spawn it essentially here, we can try and call like a set kinematic to true, for example. And we can set up that method like so. And we can do rigid body dot is kinematic equals to turbo. Let me just try this first. This is obviously on the item and I'll add it to set kinematic method. So let's try this and see how this works. So now when I pick up an item, and let me also pick up the other one, drag it in here, press one. Nope, still moves. Um, I guess let's first of all start by just checking if this even works in multiplayer. So let me try and have the other client join. And let me, okay, so it seems to work on his screen. You're just gonna have to trust me here. I'm just gonna drop them for him so you guys can also see it hopefully working for him. So you'll pick them up. You will drag them in here. And when he presses one, as you can see, now he has it, he can move it around. Okay, so it seems to work for the client, but not for the host. That's interesting. But as you can see, this does work. So now when I change it, it will change it and I can move it around and it's childed as you'd expect. And he can obviously also drop it. Um, oh, and I think something went wrong. Obviously, when they drop it, that's right, because they're already equipped. Um, that's an interesting case. Let's see here. So interaction manager. Well, I did get an error in here and I imagine it's because something in here was probably null. Well, one thing could be that the current hovered interactables. I guess first of all right now you can technically hover over a thing you have in your hand, but that's a smaller issue. Let's start by taking this, just cutting it real quick. So I'm, I still have it on my clipboard and then I'm going to add that just here, which essentially is the same thing. But what we can then also do is we can add if this is null or that's the case. I guess we can just check null like this. I think that should do the trick. So now if the game object is null, we'll return or if the game object is the same. I think this should do the trick. Actually, I guess technically if this is null, we probably want to clear it actually. So let's do just a null check here. And then let's just do clear hover and return. And then let's make sure in the clear hover as well, we do check them for null. So we essentially go through each of them and we do not check for null. So this is why I want to do if there is an interactable, then we want to do the stop hover. Okay, so there we go. So that should also include an all check now. So at least now we shouldn't have the errors, but we still got to figure out what's up with the uh, kinematic state of the item um, because it's some ordering thing happening here and we're not handling it completely correct. I guess one thing we could also do is we could check if our if the item is currently held by our local inventory. So let's do that maybe. Let's do a public pool is holding item and we can feed it the item and then we can essentially do return whether the item is equal to the uh, and we keep track this is the inventory item in the wrong script play inventory here this was the script item is equal to the item in hand if they are the same that should work and let's also just do if there is no item in hand we just return false always uh, so now we should be able to in the the item itself do if player inventory dot the local inventory that is holding item of this uh, then we always want to set the kinematic state ready body dot is kinematic to true and we want to return so this should hopefully i think fix our issue of the host not handling it correctly so let's try and do this i'll drag and drop these in here and there we go now you can see now we're holding it in front of us Cool. So now we can essentially equip items, unequip items, and now obviously you can see dropping them, the item in front of me still seems to exist. So we also need to just handle that case. And yeah, let's handle that last case of when we try and drop an item. So on a inventory item, whenever we are right clicking it, we're going to the inventory manager drop item. And here I think we also do get the item, which is where we spawn it. So item to spawn is that type of item. And I think what we should also do now is when it is dropped, we can then check essentially item to spawn. I guess what we can do is we can take the player inventory or local inventory and we can say unequip item and feed it that item. And now the unequip item just has to check and make sure that it is the same item. So if underscore item in hand, that item name, 
is the same as the item that item name or i guess if they are not the same we'll just return so there we go so now it should unequip it if it is the item that we have in our hand as well um, i guess the only case though is we only wanted to do that if we reach zero i suppose so that's actually an interesting case so i guess the deduct item we could maybe have that return how much we have left um so whenever we do this and we deduct it if we destroy it we just return zero and then if we just trickle it down one we will just return the data dot amount i think that should work and then here we'll also just return zero in case nothing works and then here we can do if the deduct item which means if it deducts it to lower or equal to zero it should then try and unequip the item i think this logic should be sound but let's give it a try again i'm taking all of this on the fly so don't hate me if this doesn't work perfectly let's try and take this down here we take this on and we drop it and there we go now you can see it also unequipped it cool can take that back in drop it i'm a little interested in why it went over here let me just test that again so i drop it pick it up and it went over there why what's in the inventory i mean there's nothing in element zero i, I don't i'm not sure why it's adding it to element one essentially but hey for now as long as it works cool so this looks like it works pretty well of course you can handle the rotation and whatnot however you want but uh, i think this works pretty well i want to move the point a little bit further away from the player but uh, yeah I'm, I'm pretty happy with this i think we have a pickup system here that we can or an inventory management system that we can actually use for something here so i think that's very cool hopefully you've been able to follow along and hopefully you've enjoyed it so far i hope things make sense and i think in the next one let's move into actually using some of the items that we have in our hands so for example if you equip an axe then we can chop trees and so on so yeah please do leave a like comment and subscribe let me know in the comments if there's other videos you want to see and other than that i just hope you have a wonderful day